we got tragic stories, man. Well, um, live left eye, man. Um, for those who don't know, you know, all y'all kids, you probably don't even know for real. Uh, she was, you know what I'm saying, big time, you know what I'm saying, big time. Or be single, whatever. Let's go ahead and get into it, man. For, for y'all kids, you know what I'm saying, do your homework. Make sure I give you a thumbs up. Don't tell them when y'all go see the video. Um, I might post a Friday or Saturday. Probably Saturday. I might do something different this week. I might not do Mr. Ball on Sunday on the Sunday. Y'all might get that video. Might get him Monday or Tuesday. Nine times out of ten, y'all might get a Tuesday. And I just do the whole week. Doing, uh, doing videos and shit next week. But let's go and get into it, man. <clears throat> Fame and a life in the spotlight. Lisa Left Eye Lopez had it all. As a driving force behind the iconic Grand <laughs> TLC, she was living the dream. But behind the music videos and sold out arenas, a darker reality loomed. In a remote paradise far from the flashbulbs, Lisa Lopez sought solace. But what was meant to be a serene escape turned into a horrifying tragedy. The last minutes of Lopez's life were a collision of speed and sudden chaos, leaving a void in the world of music that could never be filled. Join us as we dive into the story of Lisa Left Eye Lopez, a tale of music, fame, struggle, and a life cut short in its prime. Let's explore the layers of her life and unravel the puzzling mystery of her terrifying last minutes. Lisa Nicole Lopez was born on May 27, 1971, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She emerged from a tumultuous childhood, marked by an abusive relationship with her strict and domineering father. Lopez's parents split up while she was in school, and her paternal grandmother took care of her during the later years of her childhood. Through the chaos, music became her sanctuary. She showcased her talent early on, playing with a toy keyboard when she was just five years old and performing alongside her siblings and the Lopez kids at local church gatherings. Even then, her unique charm and well, star quality were evident. Though. Therefore. At the age of 19, Destiny called, leading Lopez to an open casting call for R&B slash hip-hop girl group that changed her life. She along with Tion Watkins and Crystal Jones, packed their bags and journeyed to Atlanta. A successful audition led them to form the R&B sensation Second Nature that would soon rebrand to TLC, with TLC representing the initials of the members' names. When things didn't work out with Jones, Rosanna Thomas was introduced in her place. With their new member, the name TLC didn't make sense anymore, and well, a simple yet... I used to have a question, I let it so bad, I ain't gonna lie. Love me some brown skin. A impactful decision was made. Brown Lopez skin. gave Thomas the ain't gonna lie to you Soon Chili. Lopez and Watkins ain't gonna lie to new nicknames as well, with Watkins adopting T Box. I used to call it Chili. Lopez Fuck earned that. her distinctive nickname in a rather serendipitous way. The nickname Left Eye was attributed to her by Michael Bivens, a member of the popular group New Edition. He once told her, It's your left eye. I can't quite define it, but it radiates beauty. Lopez's nickname, Left Eye, stuck, and to emphasize it, she sometimes wore a pair of glasses with a condom cleverly positioned over the left lens, a symbolic gesture to advocate for safe sex. At other times, she wore a black stripe beneath her left eye, further highlighting her unique identity. As time went on, her commitment to her nickname grew even stronger, leading her to pierce her left eyebrow. The group made their debut in the music scene in 1992, when they dropped their album Ooh on the TLC tip. I want to eat that about featured four singles and went on to sell a whopping six million copies across the globe, rapidly propelling the group into the spotlight. Just two years later, they unleashed Crazy Sexy Cool, a record that sent shockwaves through the world, selling an astounding 23 million copies worldwide. Damn. This massive success solidified TLC status as one of the most yeah. significant groups in history. Their third album, Fan Mail, hit the shelves in 1999 and managed to sell over 14 million copies around the world. The title itself was a heartfelt salute to TLC's devoted fans, and the album cover showed the names of hundreds of these supporters as a way of expressing their gratitude. In that same year, Lopez drew attention for another reason. She found herself entangled in a oh, tumultuous relationship it, with football player Andre Ryson. Following a heated argument, Lopez resorted to a drastic act. She ignited a fire in the $1.3 million house that you... Man, I would have been so motherfucking mad, girl. There ain't no way you could burn down my house. $1.3 million. 
We would have been in that fight. <laughs> Fuck the dumb shit. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't got money in the waste like that. You know I got money. I don't even... We've been living in. Lopez later clarified that her initial intention was to set fire to Rice's tennis shoes within a bathtub. Nevertheless, the flames rapidly spread throughout the home. Lopez contended that Ryson had returned after a night out and subjected her to physical abuse, prompting her to set the fire as a retaliatory action. Despite her explanation, Lopez eventually pleaded guilty to arson. As a consequence, she received a five-year probationary sentence and was slapped with a $10,000 fine. All right, yeah, sure. Regrettably, this financial burden played a role in TLC's subsequent declaration of bankruptcy within the following year. $10,000? Moreover, Lopez took proactive steps to confront her struggles with alcoholism, seeking treatment to overcome this significant challenge. Featured in the May 1999 edition of Vibe magazine, Lopez candidly expressed, I've graduated from this era. I cannot stand 100% behind this TLC project. Shit, 99, I was just got down. She had made that October shit, I was just born. Dissatisfaction, labeling Lopez as selfish, evil, and heartless. Lopez issued a challenge to them, daring each of them to release a solo album to determine who the greatest TLC member was. As expected, Watkins and Thomas chose not to engage with Lopez's proposition. However, for Lopez herself, this event marked the beginning of a promising solo career. After the release of TLC's third album, Fan Mail, and their endless band brawls, Lopez spent much of her free time recording her debut solo album, Supernova. It includes a song titled, A New Star Is Born, which is dedicated to her late father, who died when Lopez was 17. She told MTV News, That track is dedicated to all those that have loved ones that have passed away. During her brief solo career, Lopez scored two U.S. top 10 singles with Not Tonight and You Know What's Up. In that moment, she could not have known Definitely. how the potential of her career would abruptly end in 2002. On March the 30th, 2002, Lopez embarked on one of her journeys to Honduras, accompanied by a group of 12 guests. This expedition held the intention of being a spiritual retreat, and it was Lopez herself who generously covered the expenses for her companions to participate in yoga sessions and enjoy the therapeutic hot springs. However, the journey proved to be far from idyllic, despite Lopez's gracious gesture. In early April, a rented minibus driven by Lopez's personal assistant, Stephanie Patterson, encountered a tragic incident. A 10-year-old Honduran boy unexpectedly stepped in front of the vehicle. Oh, shit. Sure. Lopez was among the passengers in the minibus when the accident unfolded, resulting in the untimely demise of the young boy. In the immediate aftermath, Lopez sprang into action, alighting from the vehicle and rushing to the boy. Uh, I never knew that. I never knew that. I... Holding his head in her arms, she stood by as others attempted to revive him before urgently transporting him to a nearby hospital. In the wake of this harrowing incident, Lopez came to know that the young boy's name was Baron Fuentes Lopez. I never knew that. That's crazy. Blood, the shared last name struck a chord. What the fuck? Displaying her compassion, Lopez paid the boy's hospital bills and subsequently bore the financial responsibility of his funeral arrangements, covering approximately $3,700. Furthermore, she extended financial support of around $925 to the family, addressing any additional financial burdens. The authorities and the boy's family arrived at a consensus that his passing was an unpredictable tragedy, with no responsibility attributed to either the van's driver or Lopez, despite her innocence in the matter. And that's why I say, y'all gotta watch y'all kids, too. Not gonna lie. Y'all do gotta watch y'all children. Sometimes it be the parents' fault, too, though. Like, I've seen another case where, uh, uh, I don't know, I guess a guy dropped them off or something. Um, but the, the the dope the mom she was got them she was walking then somebody else got out the car on the other side and the kid was way behind her your kid supposed to be next to you or you supposed to make sure your kid didn't reach and the driver hit the little girl on like he he hit on purpose but it was by accident and they gon' they all jumped his ass the driver hell it, it ain't his fault it's really the goddamn mama fault you wanna be honest. The incident left an indelible mark on Lopez's so keep checking your kids. Reflecting Look on out. the tragedy, she confided, I don't believe I'll this ever... This is a situation, though. What? During her trip, Lopez had brought along a video camera to document her experiences and 
she addressed the incident on tape. The footage captured Lopez sharing her sense of being followed by a spirit. She was struck by the fact that the child who tragically lost his life in the accident shared a similar last name. This connection prompted her to engage in deep contemplation, ultimately leading her to consider the possibility that the spirit might have made an error in claiming the boy's life rather than hers. Mm. Little did she know the fate that awaited her. Just three weeks later, on April 25th, 2002, tragedy struck for Lopez. As she was behind the wheel of a rented Mitsubishi Montero SUV, driving the streets of La Ceiba, Honduras, Lopez swerved slightly to avoid a truck. It remains unclear whether the truck was moving at a slow pace or stationary. Swiftly thereafter, in a rapid reaction while speeding, oh, they got it on. I ain't never know they had it on camera. Attempt to avoid an oncoming car. The consequences were dire. The SUV veered off the highway and flipped multiple times, colliding with two trees along the way. The impact resulted in Lopez and three others being ejected through the windows before the vehicle eventually came to a halt in a roadside ditch. Lopez died instantly as a result of neck injuries and severe head trauma. She was only 30 years old. Inside the SUV, there were seven passengers, including Lopez's sister, Reina, and brother Ronald, three members of a rhythm and blues group, Egypt, and two video producers. In the aftermath of the crash, it was widely circulated that Lopez was wearing her seatbelt. However, a cameraman situated in the front passenger seat was recording during the terrifying drive. Damn, I ain't never know that. The final moments leading up to the pivotal nah, story resulted no in a fatal accident. Where y'all seatbelt, man? When that video was released, it became obvious that Lopez was not wearing her seatbelt. Lopez's final farewell took place at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in Lithonia, Georgia, on May 2, 2002, oh, yeah. drawing a multitude of attendees. Oh, that's her funny. casket bore the touching lyrics from so her contribution to waterfalls, etched as a tribute. Dreams are hopeless aspirations and hopes of coming true. Believe in yourself. The rest is up to me and you. Lopez was the proud mother of two RIP, children, man. both through adoption. She adopted a girl named Snow Lopez in 2001, who was eight years old at that time. Ten years prior, she already adopted a boy named Jamal Lopez, who was 12 years old at the time of adoption. In a statement to MTV, producer Jermaine Dupree remembered Lopez for the amazing woman she was. She was determined to be something in life. She was a true rock star and didn't care about no press. She was the rock star out of the group. She was the one that would curse on TV. She had the tattoos. You could expect the unexpected. When you see Lisa, you could expect something from her. That's the gift she carried. <clears throat> Just before she died, Lopez recorded several songs for TLC's upcoming fourth album titled 3D. One song on the album, Turntable, is dedicated to Lopez. The lyrics run, I used to walk around like nothing could happen to me. Life is a gamble, so I should live life more carefully. Thomas said she would have loved the song. This would have been one of her favorite songs. Her time was so short, said Watkins. I wish we could have just been three little old TLC ladies together. You know, just be three old little ladies. Still kicking it. Lopez's impact on the music world was undeniable. Her energetic performances, unique style, and unapologetic attitude resonated with fans across the globe. As the rock star of the she group, been she pushed boundaries some, and challenged norms, leaving an indelible mark on the music industry. Her solo career showcased her versatility and creativity, producing 40, hit singles 40, that continue to be celebrated. Beyond her musical contributions, Lopez's legacy extended to her philanthropic efforts. In 2003, her family established the Lisa Lopez Foundation, a beacon of hope for neglected and abandoned young individuals. Her foundation's motto, Energy Never Dies, It Just Transforms, reflected her spiritual philosophy and drive to a Definitely, or I'll be. Before, much of her trip to the Central American nation was filmed, and this footage has been turned into a VH1 documentary showing the final 27 days of Lopez's life, titled The Last Days of Left Eye. It premiered at the Atlanta Film Festival in April 2000. Hey, I remember when that came out. Yeah. Left Eye Lopez's story remains one that captivates hearts. Her journey from a troubled childhood to international stardom is a testament to her resilience and talent. I remember when that came out. I ain't going to lie. I knew it was fun, but nah, I used to want with Leo with the plane. Yeah, definitely with the Leo. But um, man, R.I.P. to to the the little boy who got hit. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. to Left Eye, man. Uh, Leo Left Eye, man. For real, for real. Um, 
definitely we, we lost a good superstar. You know what I'm saying? And she could goddamn sing too. And beautiful. All three of them was beautiful, Lord. Still is, really, if you ask me. Uh, that being said, man, see you when I see y'all, man. And um, give me y'all opinion. Give me what y'all think, how y'all felt, you know what I'm saying, during that time. I know some people, I was, I can't say I was, I was, I, I feel some type of way, well, felt some type of way back then when she died because 2002, hell, I was two years old, so I didn't even know who Leah left I was. <laughs> I ain't gonna say <laughs> But that being said, see you when I see you, man. Let's ride, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>